Hey, you Mrs. Sam. I'm Vivian Judge. I'm here on behalf of Explore to moderate the special focus group this afternoon. Nice to meet you, Vivian. And please call me Cecilia. Follow me, and I'll take you to your guest office. The guest office login and password is taped on a piece of paper below the computer screen. You'll be able to access all the prep work we've assembled in a detailed itinerary for the focus group that you'll be leading this afternoon. Sounds great. I'm eager to get started. It's also nice to put a face to your name, especially after all the emails back and forth the past week and a half. Floor 8, access cafe and workspaces down the corridor. Explorer's giving me an extensive training, so I'll be more than ready to handle any challenges that may come my way. I'm sure you will. We've had many focus group leaders come here via Explorer or other agencies. You appear to be as polished as they come. Thank you, Cecilia. I'm looking forward to meeting all the individuals that we've gathered for this study. I wholeheartedly believe it'll be a great learning experience for all, seeing as how we all have our problems. I think they'll find out how we are more alike than we are different. Yeah. When you see some of the people we brought in, I think you'll change your tune. The last time we did a study, we had a homeless person show up. <laughs> I think she only came for the gift card we were offering. <laughs> I always feel for the homeless. There's no telling how different their lives would have turned out. If only they had a little more support. Well, it's the hardworking individuals who are the ones who make it. I have no sympathy for the peasants who can't pull themselves up by their bootstraps and get a job. But I digress. Well, here we are. Here's your guest office. The cafe is right around the corner. Feel free to bring your tablet and work there too. The coffee is to die for. Well then, I guess I'll have to try it, per your request. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The focus group will be here in a few hours, so make yourself at home. I'll come back at 4.30 p.m. to print off your report before you go. Please submit it through our online system as well. Will do. See you then, Cecilia. Hi, Cecilia. It's 4.45 and I have to leave to catch my bus. I printed off the report and submitted the materials to the online portal. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Blessings, Vivian. That's okay, dear. A meeting tied me up. Now let's take a look at this report. I'm curious to know who came for the refreshments. <laughs> Martin Wong was a member of the focus group. He's an Asian American young adult who works as a media buyer at Stephen Barnes. He talked about the challenges he faced working in a predominantly white corporation, overhearing stereotypes and feeling like he had to wear a proverbial mask when he clocks in. He saw it as the only way to fit in personality wise. Those were the main highlights he shared Further details are flushed out in section 4 when we discuss work-life balance. Good girl. She began with the summary of each person at the table. Let's skip to the good stuff. I want to hear the excuses from the lazy bones who chose to mooch and beg rather than work for a living. Oh, now here's where it gets good. It's getting old hearing about the panhandlers and the negroes constantly screaming racism. Excuse me, Negro? I thought that was the respectful version. Old man, you better watch your mouth, you MAGA supporting Nazi. I fought for this country in name. So you were responsible for killing innocent civilians? Listen, son, unlike your kind, I fought for this country and you don't see me complaining. And my ancestors built this country, so what's your point? Activists, the same color as me, are the ones who fought for equality in this country. And we're still fighting the good fight. So what's your point? Oliver. All I'm saying is that your people could be a little more grateful. Look at Lauren. She's an example of what your kind can do in today's world. I mixed race and white passing, so I don't identify as a person of color. Well, you did when you got the job via affirmative action. I checked the white box when I applied. Old man, Allen, that's the biggest myth in hiring practices. We all know that blacks have to work twice as hard, and yet we still don't catch a break. Spare me with saying we're just tokens. 
Meanwhile, every member in your family tree gets employed at the corporation due to nepotism. This is the land of the free, the home of the brave. Our founding fathers wrote that we all have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. <laughs> yeah, ironically, that document did not abolish slavery. We were never included in the Constitution, and you know that. We were sent here on slave ships to build this country, and we still get treated as less than human. I'm not going to be here bickering back and forth. This is America. Anybody can be anything they want to be. Look at LeBron James. His circumstances didn't stop him. He gets paid more money than I'll ever make in my lifetime. And he has the nerve to complain? Boy, shut up and dribble. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you got everything you wanted in life. If you are such an American hero, and as you imply, the economy is based on hard work, why aren't you retired and living in a mansion? You had generational wealth to fall back on, and yet, here you are with me and this focus group slurping down all the free apple juice and saying America is the land of opportunity. There's many opportunities here. Our tax dollars insures it. That's why I keep walking when I see a vagrant with their hand out asking for money. That's what we're supposed to be discussing. Well, if they had a fair shake, do you really think they'd be out there? There's this lady I see every time I'm in the Metropolitan asking for a cigarette, a piece of candy, and a dollar. All these things she'd be able to afford if there really was true equality. Obviously, something tragic must have happened to that girl. And with the systematic struggles of today and honorary folks like yourself over there, she's a walking example that equality does not exist. Nor do people like yourself truly want equality for all. The lady Oliver mentions was not a figment of his imagination. I've seen her before, quite a few times. I used to see her on the 26 bus route. A sad story, really. I've often wondered what she's gone through. Every once in a while, I see her in passing, and it's the same story. I once gave her a peppermint. She was gracious. Is this the last stop? Got some candy, got some gum. Got some candy, got some gum. Can I hold a cigarette? Can I hold a cigarette? Can I have two bottles, please? Can I have two bottles, please? Got some candy, got some gum. Got some candy, got some gum. Can I hold a cigarette? Can I hold a cigarette? Can I have two bottles, please? Can I have two bottles, please? Is this the last stop? 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 President Herbert Hoover promised voters a chicken in every pot and two. That's right. Two cars in every garage. It's the American people who failed to live up to his promise. Uh, one, that's a myth. He never said that. I believe that was an ad. So call it the Mandela Effect. Dude, I have those all the time. Uh, yeah. And two, we live in a capitalist society. We all know that's the reason why poverty exists. Now, if corporations would put people first rather than greed, then society would look different. Uh. If you don't like this country, then you can leave. It's a free country. Just like how I want another cup of apple juice, I'm going to walk over and pour me one. That's freedom right there, baby. Oh, dear. Well, I guess it's getting late. I'll read this in its entirety next week. This is better than daytime TV. I guess Vivian was right. Some people are more alike than they are different. I thought that last girl was a mooch. Who would have thought a proud American like Alan would come for the complimentary apple juice? <laughs> Is this the last stop? Is this the last stop? Is this the last stop?